How's it going everybody? Adam here from Coding Basics and in this your fourth tutorial in Python we will be learning about strings. So this one also has quite a bit in it. Um, so we'll start by talking about what a string is, storing strings, concatenating strings, iterating through the characters of a string, and then finish by uh, um, explaining print and printf in Python. All of that might be foreign to you, especially if this is your first uh, programming language you've learned, but I will do my best to explain all this to you. So, just quick Wikipedia definition here um, of a string. In computer programming, a string is traditionally a sequence of characters, and then blah blah blah, all that afterwards. Basically, the way I think of a string is it's really like a sentence or, you know, stored text. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started by uh, opening PowerShell and launching Python. So, um, just give you an example of a string. So, create a variable called my name and set that equal to Adam. That's my name. So, that's an example of a string. But, um, it doesn't have to be one word could be a whole sentence sort of thing so that's all you really got to think of it is um, a string is just stored text so just look at my list next we're going on to the storing strings which uh, is pretty much just this you store in a variable then whenever you reference that variable name that is the text that'll be used so the last uh, value I set for my name is my name is Adam so that's the value that's stored there that's all it really is to storing strings we will in later tutorials get on to storing stuff in lists and maps and sets but we're not gonna get there this video um, so the next thing is concatenating strings that's really just a fancy way of saying joining strings together so we have this string here called well the string here called my name that has the um, string saved in it that says my name is Adam. Um, so I'm going to create a new variable. Uh, I'm going to call it favorite team and say and my favorite hockey team is the Pittsburgh Penguins so now we have these two strings together when it comes to printing them out we could do uh, my name plus favorite team and it would print them out now, uh, one thing you'll notice here, it basically adds together where uh, this one ends and this one uh, starts. It doesn't have a space. So if we wanted to fix that, same line, but then just put in a pair of quotation marks with a space, and that would fix that problem. Now, if we wanted to save this, you can concatenate two strings together into um, another variable. So let's create a variable called about me and make that equal to my name plus space and then plus favor oops did I spell it right yeah favorite team and now we have this variable called about me. That's all there is to concatenating string. It's really joining two strings together. You can add them. Um, when you concatenate strings, you can also include numbers. Sorry about that. Uh, my computer froze on me. PowerShell crashed. I had to exit out and reboot it. So right where we were at, you can add strings, and uh, you can add numbers into them. But you would have to do... So if I wanted to create... A, I think I was doing about me too, is what I was about to do. Um, so if I do that and then set that to my name, if I just add in a number, so a random number, 
it's going to create this error because it can't concatenate a string in an integer. In some other languages like Java, definitely you can do that. You can't in this case. So you can either put quotation marks around it or say for example you had this uh, variable called age which you had set to uh, some random age. You can then bear with me here, it's been a while since I've done this, it's either string or str that you surround it with to turn that into a string. It is str. Okay. So, if I did about me too now, it has that converted into a string. So, um, if I'm making a program where uh, I, you know, had someone's age stored and I wanted to output their name and age, I would just say my name is and then and I'm plus str age sort of thing. And I can convert that to a string then if I had a variable. So that you obviously, if you had a variable stored, you wouldn't be able to do this and then, you know, put quotation marks around the uh, age variable. So that's why this is a lot better to use than this. So if I printed it out this time, it's just going to say age. It's not going to have the variable. So that's where that is important. That's all I'm talking about for concatenating strings. It took a lot longer than I wanted it to. We are already at over nine minutes for this tutorial minus whatever I added out. Um, next is going to be iterating characters in a string. So, we'll just keep using this string called about me too. Um, what do I mean by iterating through characters? So it's selecting characters in the string. You're not selecting the string as a whole, you're just selecting characters. So, in that case, you use square brackets to reference characters in the string. So, any programming language I've used, the first, like the first reference point or the first letter, first object, pretty much anything like that in a list, um, you start with zero. So if I type that in, it's going to get the first letter out of that string for me. So in this case, it's an M, which you'll see here is the first in the string. So then the second would be one, you know. And now if I typed in two, which would be the third string, it's going to be nothing because I have that space there. Now, as far as selecting multiple at once, just say I only wanted the first, you know, ten characters in the string. I would do zero, two, eleven. So it's going to start at the zeroth um, letter, and it's going to print out all the ones up to the 11th, but not including it. So it's going to do 0, you know, all the way up there. Now, actually, that should be a 10, because we're starting at 0, so it would print out the ninth one, which would be the 10th, uh, the 10th letter. So there, you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 characters. So that did what we wanted it to. And uh, one thing to note, just say you wanted to print something out in reverse order. You can't just do 3 to 0. It's not going to print anything out. So I will show you a way you can do that in a second. Now, uh, before I do that, I will show you something called stepping. So if I... Uh, just did um, uh, 0 to, th let's say, 8. Then here I did 2. Then it's going to go from 0 all the way up to, but not including the 8th uh, letter in the string. And it's going to like step by 2. So in this case, it's only going to print every other letter. So let's see here. It printed the M, right? skipped over the Y, right, did the space, skipped over the N, did the A, skipped over the M, printed the E. 
So that did what we wanted it to. You can do the same thing. You can type in any number. It'll work. Now, I said here I would show you how to print a string in reverse. If I did the same thing, so I had the 3 to the uh, 0, but I did, uh, oops, if I put negative 1 here, it will do that in reverse order. So, n, uh, n space y skips the m though, for the exact same reasons why it was skipping the m up here. All right. Now uh, you can also leave out. So if I did zero, put a space there, and put in a two, it will. It's just basically saying do all of them, but step by two each time. So in this case, it's doing all the characters in this string. It's going to go through all of them but it's going to only it's going to do this step by two so you don't have to say the last uh uh number in the string like the last character number cuz you might not know that that's where that would be handy and then the last thing is going to be actually I think that's everything for iterating through a string I'm pretty sure that's everything you need to know there's one other thing I was thinking of but I don't think you need to know that in this video so, I'm going to quickly go over printing and printf. I used this in the first video, the print function. Print, you'll notice up here when I would reference uh, the about me to variable, it would print out this in quotation marks. Well, now if I did print about me to, just prints out what's in there, leaves out the quotation marks. So, that's really all the print function is. You can print out numbers. You can print out answers to math questions. That's really all there is to the print function. So the next thing you'll notice here is printf. What printf is is pretty much. Uh, I'll, I'll just show you. It's better with an example. So for example, if I had the variable name. And I set it to Sidney Crosby, the greatest hockey player in the world, by the way. And then if I had the variable number, had that set to 87. This is another way, without using the str up here, that you could put uh, the 87 in there. So if I did print, and if I put in, let's say, uh, well, the name variable, and then I put in a space. I can put a comma and then number, and at the end of the string, it's going to insert this number here. That's really what print a def, uh, print f is inserting stuff into a string when you're printing it out. So. Uh, do that with multiple things, so I put in another number, 71 for Evgeny Malkin. It'll add them. Only thing is, it's always going to be at the end of the list. That's not always going to be useful for you. So, in that case, you kind of have to know what kind of data is going in there. But um, if I did print, and then name, actually we'll do this, uh, we'll do the number first. So we'll do number, we'll type in the word number, space. To insert a number, it's percent %d that you put. So basically, wherever you put this percent %d, that's where the number is going to be inserted. So if I do percent %d, and a comma, just for style, and then if I did a uh, name, now, what I would be doing is you put a percent and then in brackets is where you put everything that you're inserting. I only have one, I have one percent symbol here, so I can only put one thing in this bracket. If I put more than one, I would get an error. So in this case, I can just put 87. All right, the last thing you're going to have to do in this case, put a bracket around this because there is that uh, plus symbol there. So 
I kind of made an error up here, that's why I paused the video. So, just to show you what happens, if you hit enter now, it's going to insert the number 87 into there. Now, if I had just done print, and then just forgot about all that, I wouldn't need the brackets. So, you only need the brackets if you kind of have a plus symbol and you get a lot going on there. Uh, that just basically means do everything in here first, then insert the uh, 87 later. But I do apologize for that mistake. Now, uh, let's do a couple other things. If I wanted, uh, I can do percent %s here. That's for string. Now in here, I can put a comma. And uh, Sidney Crosby. So, percent %d is for numbers. Percent %s is for uh, strings. Actually, more specifically, percent %d is for integers. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I did the exact same thing, but put a decimal symbol and an 8, watch what happens. It's going to print out only 87. So, if you want to use a floating point number, you have to put percent %f. Only thing is, you end up with all these digits you don't want. So to format that, before the f, you can put uh, something like this. So what does this uh, signify? One means no matter what, there's always going to be one decimal or one digit in front of the decimal place. This means round it to two decimal places. So if we print it out this time, this time there's two decimal places. Now uh, just to show you the one. If this was a point eight, oops. If this was a point eight without the eighty-seven, it's gonna make sure there's at least one decimal place or one digit in front just by putting a zero before the decimal place. Well, that's all I really wanted to talk to you guys about for this video. Yeah, that's everything. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Please uh, comment, thumbs up, uh, you know, subscribe. Anything that's going to help my channel grow. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, ask me. I have no problem answering your questions. And I will see you guys in my next video.